Hi, it's Amir at West Hazing with Cape Town Emergency Medicine and today we'll do a quick video on good application of below knee back slab. A well applied slab can give you excellent control and excellent pain relief. We'll start off with a layer against the skin. Obviously the plaster can't be applied straight to the skin. The two ways you could do it is either with stocking net, which is expensive. We're not going to do that here today because we're in a resource limited environment. What we'll use is skin wool. You can use whatever your hospital has, and because it's going to be the lower limb, a nice broad band of skin wool. I like to start wrapping at the feet, and what we do is we make sure that the skin wool goes beyond where we want the plaster to end. So we start around there, and we're going to be doing a 50% overlap. I'll show that better for you in the upper leg. Make sure that when you're going around the heel here that you are well covered on the heel, if you have a little dog's ear like that, you can just tuck it in neatly. If you come in a little bit closer here, you'll see what I mean by a 50% overlap. That is just that we make sure that 50% of the layers are overlapping. That means that you have a real two layer cover on every part of the leg. We're going to go up all the way to the popliteal crease and then either tear or cut the residual tape off. The next thing we need to do is to select the correct width for plaster. It's a common misconception to think that if you're placing a back slab, it should be the width of the limb that you're applying it to. But if you're doing that and you have a slab just lying on the back of the limb, you can only provide control in one dimension. Most of these injuries have three dimensional instabilities and these joints are mobile in three dimensions. So it's important to provide three dimensional control. Therefore, the correct width is the widest possible slab that will wrap around the leg but not actually touch in the front. Check this every time you do it. You'll be surprised often it's a little bit wider than you would have imagined. We now measure out the length and in this case, if we have a look at the toes here again, we'll just peekaboo the toes. You don't want to be trapping the little toe eventually, so you could measure it from here, but you have a large amount of foot left over. But what I suggest you do is that you measure it from the base of the big toe and we'll eventually just fold this back once the plaster is on. We start measuring at the fold of the big foe, lay it down the leg, and again up to the popliteal crease. Rather go slightly long if you're in doubt, you can always cuff it back at the end. There are many ways to roll this out now. Um, one simple way is to simply let it drop and to fold it. How many layers? For a lower limb, we usually say 10 layers plus or minus 2 for a below knee back slab or anything below the knee and 12 plus or minus 2 above. But individualize it to how muscular your patient is, how long it's going to stay on and what kind of control you need to achieve. But for the demonstration purposes here, we'll stick to eight. Tear off the excess again and discard. One last check just to see that you're about right in how far you're going. And that's good. Earlier I said that you should wind the skin a little bit higher and that you'll see that eventually because we want to tuck it over. You now need to dip or to wet your plaster. You want clean water and you want it at about room temperature. Too cold and it'll take forever to set, it'll be brittle. Too warm, it'll set too fast and you can actually damage the skin. Immerse the pop completely in the water. Roll out excess and just do a gentle lamination. The primary lamination will be on the injury though. You can choose whether you want to lay from the top or the bottom. The bottom for me is the, the more tricky landmark, so I usually start from the bottom. Again, just checking. So I'm lying here, level with my big toe, but it will then entrap my small toe. So here it's good practice to just tuck back this edge here so that you can free up the little toe. Make sure you lay it nice and in. Again, here around the ankles, don't just leave these unneat edges. Tuck it in neatly. 
and we can laminate that in. From the top here, we'll make sure that it's laid down nice and square on the leg. Really equal on both sides. We want to make sure that it's nice and tight around exactly where it want, we want it to be. We now laminate to make sure that all the fabric like marks are out. As always with handling plaster, you never want to be using fingers and thumbs because you'll create pressure points there. It's always just the flats of your palms and fingers handling plaster. The second landmark apart from the Vilto that we don't want to entrap is right here at the head of the fibula where you have the peroneal nerve curving around. You do not want plaster to be entrapping there. So if you're going up quite high here, which isn't a good idea, isn't a bad idea, I'm sorry, I would also just fold back that little edge. At this point now, we'll take our skin wound back around our plaster, and if you have a nice little close-up there, you'll see that we now have a wool-covered edge that's protecting our patient. We'll do the same down at the toes, and you'll see there, we have a nice wool-covered edge. If you're seeing that you still have a little bit of entrapment of the toe there, you could just flare it out. It's somewhere at this point here now where you would be molding or manipulating your fracture if you needed to. If you just take right from the side, keeping in mind that you want to try and get as close to neutral as you can and that you don't want any tilt in that plane. Now we're going to put our final layer which is just to fix the whole thing together. We use a stretchy bandage. I like to start at the area of the injury, go to the toes and come back up. It's a relatively firm wind and again we're going to do a 50% overlap. At the end, I want you to go further than the end of the plaster, and I'll show you just now why. You may run out just before you've had enough. It's not a problem. Just take the second roll. Keep it nice and neat. And again, we're winding slightly beyond where we need to be. Firm it. Usually now you'll be doing a final mold and manipulation, so you don't have time to stick this down nicely. Just tuck it, you'll get back to that later. This is the time now. Grab yourself a chair or whatever you need. Make sure that you are molded in between the on the sides of the Achilles tendon without causing pressure. Get you nice and gentle and molded. And again, please note, I'm using my palms. I'm never using fingers or points to get in here. And we would now do our final positioning gently to about 90 degrees and neutral on the lateral twist in terms of supination and pronation. And you'll just have a little sit here and wait for this to sit. The positioning of the patient is quite strange because we're having his leg hang over. This is something that we have to do often, again, because we are staff limited and resource limited. You don't always have the, the luxury of an assistant who can hold plaster for you. So here, gravity becomes your assistant. Obviously, this is something that you can't do in someone who's got multiple injuries or are unstable. It's just a nice little cheat for you to be able to do everything nicely with one, with one person working. If you come closer again, I'll show you now why I like to wind beyond. What you'll do now is you'll tuck this in. This creates another safety layer here, and it looks nice and neat rather than loose free wool sitting around. We'll do the same around the edge of the feet and the toes, and we'll just tuck that in. Do one final check around the toes here. Make sure that you don't have any points digging into toes, and if you do, it's the easiest thing to just flare the pop while it's still relatively soft. Just flare it slightly, and again, make sure your peroneal nerve and fibula head's nice and free. Nice and free, that's not a problem. You can, there are many ways now to fix your, your plaster in here. You have 
know, some leftover plaster from what you use. So don't waste money on elastic plaster. Something else is going to make a little plaster repair. <coughs> plaster. Dip it. Excess water off. <coughs> Lay it. Laminate it in. and wait for it to dry. At this point in time, it's a good idea to ask the patient to move up on the bed a little bit. It's more comfortable for them. But don't let them get off the bed or put their foot down yet, because they're likely to crack your plaster. Critical points here, comfortable position for you and for your patient. Make sure that your critical pressure points and danger points are flared and taken away. Think intelligently about how far along, around you want to get and as far as you can without it actually touching is the correct, uh, the correct width. Make sure everything is nice and neat and take pride in your work. And then this patient, depending on the injury, would follow up somewhere between two to five days later for a vascular check and or a change into a circular pump. That's it. A good quality below knee back slab will get you out of trouble every time. Thank you very much.